Hi, welcome to Photoshop Lightroom TV. Next episode, I'm your host, Marek Mularczyk. Uh, welcome to our next episode. We had some news last week. Adobe has released an update to Lightroom. Now, Photoshop Lightroom 3.2, this is the latest update. You're free to go to Adobe website and download it. It's a free update. All the updates for Adobe software are free. So if you purchase Lightroom 3, you can update to 3.2 without any charge. So you go to Adobe website to download it, or if you head on to photoshoplightroombridge.co.uk, there's an article about it and a link that takes you directly to the download for both Windows and Mac users. Uh, Adobe now is going to release dot two release cycles for the updates, so there won't be any 3.1 or 3.3, it's only 3.2. At the same time, Adobe released the camera raw update, 6.2, at the same time, remember Lightroom and Photoshop use the same Camera Raw engine and Adobe Bridge as well. So it's the same update for Camera Raw, uh, 6.2. Again, you can free to go to download the update or you can download it through Photoshop update, updater, from Adobe updater for Photoshop CS5. Uh, remember Raw 6.2 is, is just an update for Photoshop CS5 because CS5 is out now. Adobe doesn't release any updates to Camera Raw 5, which was in Photoshop CS4. The only updates are updates for Camera Raw 6 and Photoshop CS5. Okay, now what I got for you today, I've got a really exciting tutorial for you. I want to talk about creating special effects in Photoshop, being more creative. And this is a technique I've learned from Bert Monroy, a fantastic Photoshop designer who creates graphics from scratch. He creates amazing things in Photoshop, go check out his website Bert Monroy and what I'm going to show you here today is how to create lighting effect, lighting effect inside Photoshop from scratch. Okay. Now, if there's anything you want uh, me to show you, if you have any questions, any problems, send me an email. Um, or you can go to, you can send it through the website photoshoplightroomtv.com, or if you go to photoshoplightroombridge.co.uk, you can send me an email to contact me, or just send me an email to info at sitetraining.co.uk, and I'll be happy to explain it to you. I'll be happy to create a tutorial or a trick. Okay, so without further ado, let's go on to our Photoshop tutorial. I'll see you in a bit. Here I am in Photoshop and I'm going to show you how to create a lightning effect using Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop CS5. This technique will apply to any version of Photoshop because I'll be using some filters that were in Photoshop for many many years. Okay, I'll start by creating a new file file new just a blank document and I'll make it 800 by 600 pixels and looks good 72 dpi I'll press ok right now I'm going to create rectangles using the rectangular marquee tool I'm just going to switch my colors to the defaults black and white I'll start by creating the first rectangle just like so, and I'm going to fill it with black, which is my foreground color, so I can use Alt Backspace on the keyboard, and I'll deselect it. I can do Select Deselect, or just press Control D on a keyboard, or Command D on a Mac. Now let's do one more, and let's leave some space. I'll do this one, maybe that size, and I'll fill it with black as well, and I'll deselect it. And I'll do one more much wider than the others, and I'll fill it with black, and I'll deselect that. And I'll do one more very thin here, and I'll fill that with black, and I'll deselect it. Okay, so I've got these rectangles. Now I'm going to blur them. I'll go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. Blur them just a bit, maybe a bit more, about three pixels. Looks good. Just press OK. Now I'm going to apply polar coordinates filter to distribute them in the image in different directions. So I'll go to filter, distort, polar coordinates. And the one I'm going to use here is the rectangular to polar, not polar to rectangular. Yeah, it looks good. That's before, that's after. You can preview filters in Photoshop 
by clicking and holding the mouse button down you can see the before and when it releases you see after or like that I'll just press OK looks good looks interesting OK now I'm going to apply clouds filter to it go to filter render and difference clouds difference clouds gives a more uh, interesting effect or more contrasty okay and that starts looking good looks nice uh, now I'm going to invert this effect here so I'll just press ctrl I on Hold on, just just a moment. Okay, or that will be Command I on a Mac to inverse it. And I'm going to add levels to improve some contrasts in here. So image adjustments and levels. I've added some levels before. I'm just going to add some more here to bring more contrast. Okay, that looks good. Just press OK, and I'm going to colorize it using hue and saturation image adjustments, hue, saturation, I'll click colorize and I use some blue hue color here maybe I'll get some saturation maybe something like that okay just press OK and now I could use it on another image so I'm just going to open another image let's see what I've got here do, do, do. something that I could use for this design to edit maybe this image here I'm just going to drag and drop that into this image here right going to change the blend mode to screen and I'll rotate it okay I'll position it here I'll resize it a bit okay maybe a bit more This looks good and I can raise certain parts on here so I'll just use the eraser tool make the brush bigger and I can raise certain areas on the image normally I would spend more time on it trying to be more precise or oh, I could just erase that here and here into the clouds really quickly okay. and that's our lighting effect back to the studio hi welcome back I hope you enjoyed the tutorial very nice now here's time for our tip of the week here's a tip for you in Photoshop you have created a selection let's say you selected a building and you created a mask so you masked all the backgrounds except for the building and now you notice that there are some artifacts on the edges of the building maybe bits of the background or bits of certain colors and you want to remove them now here's a quick tip for you use the minimum filter go to filter oh, select the mask first because you'll be doing it on a mask and go to filter other minimum great great filter for removing some unwanted artifacts in your images okay good right now I've got one more tutorial for you and this will be Photoshop as well and this time I'm going to show you how to convert a text to a shape so you could stretch a distorted make loads of things with it. Okay, this is another Photoshop tutorial. So, let's go on. Here's another Photoshop trick for you, or tutorial. This is another example I've learned from Bert Monroy, an amazing Photoshop designer. Make sure you check his website 
and you can also buy his book about digital painting really really good I'm going to start by creating a new file file new in Photoshop I'll make it the same size as the previous design 800 by 600 pixels I'll just press OK now I'm going to add some text so I'll select my text tool okay and da -da -da -da. And I'll use some big board font. Let's see what we've got here. Maybe stencil. And I'll just I'll use that as black text. And I'll just type in some text here. Just need to make this much bigger. Make it about 140 points. Okay, this is uh, one tick. One really tip for you here: if you have a text and you've got a cursor inside your text, if you move your cursor outside the text area, it changes into a move tool, and you can move the text around. Just going to center it. I'll take. I'll accept the transformation here. I'll make it slightly smaller. So we can fit it here, let's see, maybe about a hundred points. That looks good. Now because I don't have the text selected, I can press and hold the control key on my keyboard and move the text around. Okay, good. Now I'm going to go to layer in the menu, type and create work path. Okay. Right, good. And I'm going to now I've got it here in the paths panel, which means I can delete the text layer. I don't need it anymore because I've got it here. And now uh, that's my path. So path stays with me here. Now I'm going to use the direct selection tool. And with direct selection tool, I can select particular letters. I'm just going to zoom in a bit so you can see closer. I can take maybe the S. I uh, can select that and stretch it. You can use the handles. This reminds me of using the pencil where you can select different anchor points and resize or reshape your path. Okay, I'm going to expand that S here for Psi. That looks good. And maybe G here as well. Just select that. I can stretch that. That looks good. Nice. Okay, I'm just going to zoom out. I'll select that all, and in the paths panel, I'm going to stroke it or fill it with my foreground color. So now it's black. That also was a really quick and easy tutorial for you. Once again, thank you. Big thanks to Bert Monroy for this tip. Thank you very much. Hi, it's me again. I'm back. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and this episode. This is the end, I'm afraid. That's it for this week. There will be more tutorials, tips and tricks next week. I'm Marek Molarczyk from SciTraining.co.uk. For more information about tips and tricks on Photoshop and Lightroom and Adobe Bridge, go to PhotoshopLightroomBridge.co.uk. And I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. If you have any questions, just send me an email. I'll be happy to help. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye.